Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stephen Woodard. I, I have the uh, privilege of serving as uh, the pastor of some of the folks in this room, and uh, I've, gotten, I've gotten to know Miss Shirley, as I would call her, um, through Terry and her family and, and all those kinds of things. And so it's my privilege to try to keep us organized today and, and lead out our effort. Um, if you have never been uh, to a Christian funeral before, um, this is it's different than the way that a lot of funerals um, often tend to go, at least trajectory-wise. Um, there's this interesting mixture of grief, uh, sorrow, but also joy, hope. Um, we are sad, but at the same time, we're also filled with a hope that is otherworldly. Um, and so you're going to see some of that today if you're not familiar with it. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love the privilege of getting to, to talk with you about that and settle some things in your own heart. Um, I had the privilege of talking with Miss Shirley okay. about that um, in one of the last few days before she passed away and um, claims to know Jesus. I think that matters. It changes things. It changes eternities. Um, I also get to read uh, what I'm told was one of her favorite portions of scripture, uh, which is Psalm 23. It's a psalm that's commonly uh, read at funerals. Um, today is, seems like a good day to read it, too. Maybe you're familiar with it. My translation of scripture says this, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's a good portion of scripture to love. It reminds us that for those who belong to the Lord, the Lord is near, especially in the moment of darkness, especially in the moment where you are traveling through the valley of the shadow of death, as David mentions here. To be in a place where evil is around and yet not fear it, something has fundamentally changed in you because of the relationship with God. To be in a place where uh, danger is present, but to not be afraid because God himself carries a rod and staff. They comfort you. To be in a place where you have very real enemies. But to have a table prepared for you in that place. I don't know. I, I want to be near a God who does those kinds of things. I hope you do too. We, we don't have much in the way of a program planned this afternoon. The, the hope is to celebrate the life of Miss Shirley as we grieve. Uh, we got a couple of things on the agenda, and there will be a little bit of time for uh, others to speak if you are so inclined and want to prepare your thoughts. Um, we're going to sing a couple of songs that we've been asked to sing. We've got uh, Terry and Angie who have prepared to, to speak this morning. In a moment, I'm going to read the obituary, but uh, it, in a few minutes, if you feel led to uh, to say a quick word. We want to give space to that, and so you can prepare your thoughts for it. But uh, the obituary says this. Shirley Marguerite Marie Corbett, 86, of Nashua, New Hampshire, passed away December 23rd, 2021, after a long illness. She was predeceased by her devoted husband, Cardin Lee Corbett, her parents, Teresa Lavoie and Albert Morissette, and her granddaughter, Crystal Corbett. Shirley is survived by her son, Kevin Corbett, and his wife, Nancy, her son, Michael Corbett, and his wife, Sue, and her daughter, Teresa Corbett, and her son, Kurt Corbett, and his wife, Angela, and her 10 grandchildren, 
Sean, Shannon, Tina, Carden, Robert, Alexander, Jesse, Christopher, Cameron, and Blake, as well as 20 great-grandchildren, and even four great-great-grandchildren. Shirley was raised in Hudson, New Hampshire, and attended Alburn High School. Shirley worked several manufacturing jobs, Sportwell Shoe, Horton & Hubbard, Sprague Electric, and Coleman. During her journey in, of life, Shirley worked bartending at the Golden Dragon until she retired. She enjoyed going to the ocean and loved visiting locations with lighthouses. Noble Lighthouse was one of her favorites. Over the years, her love of teddy bears turned into quite the collection. <laughs> Might have to hear more about those teddy bears later. <laughs> she loved her ice cream. She once went to Kimball Farms and had the Kimball Special and finished the whole thing. But her favorite place to go for ice cream was the big one in Merrimack. Shirley's greatest joy was her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. She, she was known as Uma. Were there, and there wasn't a baby that she could not calm and lull to sleep. In fact, that all the pictures rotating through half of them had kids in them. There you go. <laughs> Shirley was kind to every stranger she met. Often, she would bring someone to the house who needed a place to sleep or who needed a meal. She always had an ear to listen and a heart filled with love for others. She taught her children to show kindness and to offer help to those in need. Uh, one of the things that we've been, songs that we've been asked to play this morning, I hope you'll sing along with me, is a song that is often played at funerals. It's the song that probably everyone knows. It's an Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rest. Um, uh, Ariel, this side. 
Well, I don't have any teeth. <laughs> I do. I do. I got a few. Well, first of all, if there's anybody here from home hospice care, sometimes they show up to these events. I want to say thank you mm -hmm. for everything you did. Yeah. Um, from the nurses to the aides to the social workers to the chaplains to the on-call nurses to everybody that supported us through the whole thing. Bless you. Um, uh, surely. Hmm. Um, my husband and I are homebodies. We don't get out much. We just don't. And we didn't spend a lot of time visiting. So I feel really grateful that uh, Shirley allowed me to be one of her caregivers at the end of her life. And uh, I'm honored that she would let me take care of her. Um, I got to know Shirley. Um, I heard about the Shirley mm -hmm. that everybody seems to know. <laughs> the one that, um, the wild Shirley. And surely I know, um, likes to tell a story, um, but also she, um, I saw her express things like charity from her bed, giving to those who didn't have what they needed. She was still giving from her bed. Um, Forgiveness. I saw her express forgiveness to someone she had never met, but who needed forgiveness because the person that should have forgiven them didn't, but she did. And um, love and kindness that she showed to me, even though I really didn't deserve it because I wasn't there for her during the time 25 years that I've been married to her. But she took me under her wing and she showed me such love and such kindness. And she even said she liked my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make an egg again the way I made them for her. It's got to be the pan. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the pan, Angie. <laughs> That's because we tried hard. And I did things that I didn't think I'd be able to do. It's like, I can't make an egg for a long time either. But she liked me a certain way, her, and we did. I made her eggs over easy, the perfect, yeah. and she loved them. She swore I made the best eggs and toast, and I can't make them again to save my life. They verify. <laughs> 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 It's a good thing you know how to cook. <laughs> but she she was so good to me and she was so so sweet and loving. Um, and last but mostly I wanna thank the Forbit family for allowing me to take care of your mom and the chance to get to know you all that I haven't done in the past twenty five years. Um you're a great bunch, and you're, you're sweet people. I mean, Carrie and Kevin and Mike, and we're, we're Kevin, Mike, Carrie, that's it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm married to the last one. And the spouses, and, and when the kids would come by, and, and I just, I'm grateful to have had this chance to get to know you all better. Thank you. I'm up, kid. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to believe everybody's in their underwear. Is the time about when Christopher pulled the thing off the crib? No, I won't go there. Take your mask off. Sorry. Yeah, you can take your mask off. Oh, up here. I can breathe.
so you can take your shoes off, do, Terry. Huh? You can take your shoes off, Terry. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> uh, so the first thing I'm going to read is um, this gentleman that knew both my mom and dad um, came up to me out of the blue and he said he wrote a poem. And it just touched me, so I wanted to share it because I don't think it should be just shared with me. And he titled it Memory. And he's an old Frenchman, so straight out of Canada. So the wording might be a little off, but I'm going to read it as he wrote it. Hey. Hey. Mm -hmm. And it goes Memory. Memory is a treasury stored within wonderful things. Though gone, the reality, the peeling bell still rings. Yesterday is gone forever never to relive, but along comes memory, with many treasures to give. Our dear and lasting friend, who has suddenly slipped away, still walks along with us in the stillness of the day. The fragrance of yesterday still lasts in our hearts, and so now even gone is still in a park. And I just thought that was really sweet that he took the time to um, mm -hmm. remind me that Though my mom is gone, you know, the memories is what makes her live on and the crazy stories we will have for years to come. <laughs> years to come. Um, so, that was written by Camille. So now my turn. And I, I was told bullet points, but I know that I would get sidetracked too easily even with bullet points. So what can I say about my mom? She lived her life out loud. And she did it her way. She was the strongest, most courage, courageous woman I have known. She was ahead of her time in thinking. And she did not hesitate to speak her mind, even if the truth hurt. But she had a heart bigger than the sun. You never had to question where you stood with her. And there was nothing she wouldn't do for the ones she loved. As Angie put it, even from that bed, she still gave. She worked hard to provide for her children so that we would have everything we needed and wanted. And mom and I didn't always see eye to eye, and everybody who knows our relationship knows that. As a matter of fact, our relationship was like oil and water. Um, but my mother always stood by my side, and no one will ever love me like my mother did. I never understood the reasons why she did what she did until I was older. She was overprotective. She didn't look me out of her sight. And then she shared her life story with me. And now being a mother myself, I understand my pain was her pain. My mother loved people and listening to their stories. Oh gosh, did she love listening to her stories. I think that's why she liked working in the bar so much. She accepted people unconditionally without judgment. She would help anyone in need. Often, again, it was in the open tree, but she would bring people home. I don't know how many times I'd come home from school, there was somebody in the house. Somebody sleeping on the floor. My poor father would come home from working second shift and there'd be another person in the house. And he, he just never questioned it. I learned through her that every person has value and deserves to be treated with love, compassion, and respect. That no one is better than another and you treat the homeless person like you would treat the president. Every person needs love. In her final months, she fought her battle courageously. I watched her fight COVID. I watched her go to rehab and get better so she could come to the home that she shared with my father. She defied the odds five times when they told us this is it, just so she could spend more time with her loved ones. And right up to the end, she wanted to make sure all her children were going to be okay. She would ask about each sibling, um, grandchildren, and I believe it's shorter that we would watch out for each other. We had moments of tear, tears and moments of laughter in our final weeks. And boy, did she make us laugh. Um, some of the things, oh my gosh, I can't. Someday I'll start posting them. Um, but mom, you know, in that journey, she's finally resting and she's in the arms of Jesus. And I will have that opportunity to see her again someday when God calls me home. But she lived a life well lived. She taught us many, many, many great lesson, lessons as a children. I'll take my shoes back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a bar 
frying pan. No, no frying pan. I did okay. At this time, we have a few minutes available. If anybody would like to come forward, and see, we'll have you. Oh. He's bigger than you. <laughs> he is bigger than you. <laughs> okay. I thought there was like a. Well, oh, hi, I'm Carden, one of the grandsons. Uh, thanks for my grandfather. I see the love in this room. Your grandma is a share of love so well. The stories, she'd say, <laughs> when you got out of line, you know you'd get the king. <laughs> so anytime it was you're out of line, grandma's gonna find the king, and uh, she was quick. <laughs> well, uh, even when she was in her chair, she found a way. She didn't want to be where she was. She'd find a way to walk. She'd do whatever we want, what she wanted. And there was plenty of stories for her being protecting. One of the greatest stories is how she at the bar, giving drinks. She's always said to me, she's like, oh, and this was toward the, toward the end. She's like, they always came in. They always had a great time. They were always really drunk, because Shirley's pores were like no other. <laughs> and she also a protector, and told me of how she stopped someone from being stabbed with her getting stabbed in the leg. So even with throw herself to the leg. That guy didn't get out of bed very easily. But now, my grandma, my grandfather, and my elder sister are together. Thank you, Karen. If anybody doesn't know who I am, I'm Michael. And, uh, uh, Therese is my fiance. We're going to be getting married shortly. And uh, it all started with a ride to the beach. Somebody asked me if I'd take them to the seafood festival. She prayed for rain. Uh, it didn't rain. And we had a date. And we started to see each other. And she said to me, she said, you know, I can't go out very much. I'm taking care of my, my mother. and She's very sick. And uh, I probably won't see you much. And I said, well, my father's in a nursing home, and I've finished taking care of him as best I can. If you don't mind, I'd love to meet your mother. So I don't mind one Saturday night, I get invited to the house. You know, I'm 63 years old and saying, I'm going to make a good impression. <laughs> I meet this girl's mom. Now, I knew her father because he went to the diner. So I said, what do I do? Well, I can't bring just one box of candy. Just do one of them. And I just can't bring one bouquet of flowers. Just two women. <laughs> so I show up with two bags of flowers, two things of candy, and a big smile. And uh, her mother was just so kind. She looks at me. And the purple flowers I had. Little that I know that was one of her favorite colors. And uh, she accepted me right away. And we would sit in a chair and talk for hours. And those were our Friday night, Saturday night dates. I'd go home, you know. And one night she says, why can't you stay over? I go, I don't know. She says, Terry, you let him sleep in the chair. You <laughs> sleep in the bed. <laughs> next to me. <laughs> so I would sleep, spend time with her all night long. <laughs> and her favorite thing was to listen to music. She listened to all this country stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I said, come on, let's jive this up a little bit. We had her listening to the Bee Gees, uh, Elton John, and she just had a ball. She was full of life. You could see she was a lot of fun to be with. And the family, I mean, you guys are huge. 
I mean, I'm an old child, you know, I'm at seas. Um, it's been a great experience. She became a really good friend. And I actually called her mom. And she let me call her mom, which was a great pleasure. Because my mother passed away years ago. And, uh, it was nice. She was very protective of that one over there. She laid the law down. She told me, you better take care of my daughter. And then Pastor Stephen got it too. <laughs> watch him because I'm not sure, you know. And grudgingly, he said, yeah, I'll watch over that guy. You know, you know. So, uh, she wanted to be at the wedding, but, uh, you know, it didn't happen. It's been a whirlwind, and uh, I was just very fortunate to meet Shirley Corbett, a great woman. And uh, you're all blessed by having had her in your life. She loved you, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, she said she did. She told me that, so she met Oh, yeah, we got along real well. Yeah, you did. For the record, I'm still gauging it. Yeah. We have them at home. Yeah, my last time to get to... Her cane is out in the car. Did you hide it from her? So my last time with getting to been with Miss Shirley, uh, she wanted to make absolutely certain that we were going to take care of Miss Terry. So, yeah. I'm yeah. still around. Would anybody else like to speak? Yes, please. Oh. You can wait. Oh, ladies first. Ladies, 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 ladies. The brat goes first. The brat? <laughs> the, the, the brat? Not the, yeah, the brat gets the priority. Oh, squeeze the cheek. I'm a brat. <laughs> um, have many, many, many memories of my children. I think one of the last precious memories that comes to my mind was just in October. She was grouchy. She wasn't feeling quite right. And um, we called Terry home from work. And I remember Terry came in and she was just grouchy and he just screamed and we roared on the top of the room. <laughs> and so we were standing there just going, <laughs> and we just were, we just did that for. How long? I don't know, at least a half hour anyways. <laughs> we just growled. And um, I don't know how it started, but we um, eventually went to Aunt Shirley's uh, coat chest. Mm -hmm. And we found shawls. And I remember going back, we were looking for stuff from my grandmother and your yeah. grandmother. And uh, we went back and we found these shawls and we came out wearing them just kind of all, you know. And I said to Aunt Shirley, I said, hey, Aunt Shirley, I said, you wore these? She goes, yeah, back in the day, you know, and we were talking. And so she put them on and um, we were, I have a video of it. It's where some of the pictures came from. <laughs> and I remember looking at her and saying, Aunt Shirley, you need a hat. And she goes, well, I have one. And Aunt Shirley, as you everybody knows, she has these big hat boxes and stuff. And I'm picturing this big fancy hat, you know, and um, she goes, well, I have one. And she's pointing up. And I seen the, the pumpkin hat. <laughs> and uh, I was like, is this one? <laughs> yeah. And she put it on and we just, uh, it was just the day that that was just so precious. I'll never forget that day. And you know, at the end, she she put the hat on and she went. <laughs> 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 and we were laughing and just it just the whole mood of that day just kind of lifted and everything was. You would have never believed that she was the way she was in the beginning of that day. It was just. So precious. Like I said, I have many, many memories of Aunt Shirley. 
my relationship with her was a lot different than some. And um, I'll never forget it. This family, Mike and Kevin and Terry, and Kurt, don't know you much. But you are like brothers and sisters to me. And I thank you for that. You know. I just want to share a couple stories. Oh boy. Just a couple. <laughs> well, I don't write memoir or anything. Unless he can talk about. as much as my mother. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Mrs. Uh, we know. Uh, okay. I learned from the best. There you go. All against it. But no, it's just, I, I mean, I had the pleasure of living above her for quite a bit of my life. Whether it was when you had moved out and I was there with my dad. I was just, I had the pleasure of knowing my grandmother really well, and you guys have all said a lot, she did, she, she gave as much as she could ever do for as many, like, it was always weird because it would come in cycles, be like, oh, I can do for you today, or I, I just did this for someone, or such and such, and it's always that type of story, but I think back to going down to the Golden Dragon when I was little. Having a beer? No, no, my mom had the door night shift, I was at the pinball machine, but all the people, I would get to know some of the people that come around. And all, here, they, they, you get drunk people with a kid in a bar, you will have quarters for days. <laughs> <laughs> so, needless to say, I played more pinball, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, than you could ever imagine. But it was a good time. And I'm very thankful for those stuff. And then there's times where she stressed me out, caught me doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> Half the time when I was a teenager, I was just struggling for stuff, but she kept me in line. She whacked me with a cane or whatnot. <laughs> but that but I can go to that story too late. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very thankful. And in the last year, it was really a struggle because it's like you go down and visit. And I mean, after Uba passed, it was, it was tough. We had a barbecue, and I'm grateful that we took that time, but I'm glad she's found her way home. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. I just I thank you all for coming out, paying her respect. It's just appreciated, and I thank you, Grandma, for what you did for us. Yeah. So thank you all. So I know, like, so I know, like, some of you I didn't get to know Uma as long, mm -hmm. but we. Oh, when I went over, we just sit there for hours, just mm. watching game shows, talking about school and all mm. other stuff. Did she make you watch The Price is Right? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to say a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Brady. Thank you. That's time for maybe one more. I grew up in a time I was my mother's first child. And I can remember when we were really young and there was some issues in our family. And my mom, she always made sure that me and my brother Mike always had a good roof over our head, food in our bellies. She'd take us to the beach, I don't know, all the time. It was With her, it was the beach. Dad yeah, was the mountains, her was the beach. <laughs> and uh, I know that between my parents, both of them, they always made sure that I showed respect to all people and that I would not look down on somebody just because they were having a struggle in life. And we did. Everybody was a quality person who deserved respect. And like I say, everybody said it. My mother would bring people home that were down on their luck and let them spend the night on the couch. In fact, one time I had to give up my bed for somebody to sleep at the house, you know? But she had a heart of gold and she loved everybody she met. And even when she got mad at somebody, she was able to let it go. 
and I just want to thank everybody that came here today to be here for, for typically you go to a event like this with somebody so old you don't see so many people so that just goes to show you how many people she touched in her life that's all I got to say thank you thanks Kevin <coughs> song we were asked to sing this morning <laughs> deals with the confidence that guys like David were talking about when he wrote Psalm 22. Where does assurance come from? <laughs> Lives well lived are great stories. But then there's something special that happens when Jesus is truly yours.
stories that need to be kept told. Pray that as we leave here today, uh, would you hold us near yourself? Would you comfort the family? Would you help those on the fringe lean in and serve well? But even more than that, would you use the testimony of Shirley's life well lived to draw us closer to yourself and show us how good you are to